If we are 7,500 episodes in, you might look at us at the beginning and say, there is no way I could ever do that. But we started with one, just like everybody else, and then we kept running it. We just kept going and going and going and going. What I started to understand was, oh, okay, these people do not know more than I do about everything. They know more than I do about their thing. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1002, What We Wish We Knew About Dream Chasing. That is last week's live podcast. Today, for episode number 1003, the number one lesson from being around millionaires. So Alan and I are very blessed because not only have we had clients that are millionaires, we've had mentors that are millionaires. Uh, do we have friends? I would say we have friends that are millionaires and we are on our way to becoming millionaires as well, which I'm very grateful and is very weird for me to say. I remember when I was younger and Alan, I don't know if it's the same for you. If you're watching or listening, maybe this is the way you thought when you were younger. But when I was younger, I assumed everybody who was older than me had it figured out. I assumed that all of my teachers knew everything in the world because number one, they're teaching me and number two, they're older. And I just thought everybody had it all figured out when you got to a certain age. And then I remember, you know, when I was in my mid twenties and early thirties where we are now, I guess I had friends who were teachers and I remember thinking, oh, okay, they, they kind of know what I know. I mean, they know their area of expertise and they know the subject they're teaching, but they don't necessarily know finance or health or relationships or the economy or habits any better than I do. Okay, that's interesting. I remember when I was younger, I thought doctors had it all figured out. I mean, if you're a doctor, you must be super, super smart. You must know everything. And then when I got older and I would go see the doctor and the doctor might be somebody who was you know, out of shape or somebody who didn't seem like they had a great relationship, that made things pretty abundantly clear to me that, okay, doctors know stuff that I don't for sure, but there's also probably stuff that I know that they don't know. When I got around millionaires for the first time, I had the same thought process, right? When I was younger, I assumed if you were a millionaire, you knew everything. You were the smartest human in the world. You just knew everything. You had like a bat cave and you had all this special stuff and you just knew. You had libraries of books and you were just always put together. You never missed. You knew everything. You were a shining example of potential. And then Alan and I, and I'll, I'll speak for myself, I started meeting and talking to millionaires behind the scenes and I realized very similarly to the first two points that, yeah, they know a lot of things and they know a lot of things that I don't, but I also know a lot of things that they don't. Just because they have that level of success does not mean that they are like know everything. They're not all knowing. Now, again, I'm not saying this to uh, talk down on teachers or doctors or, or millionaires, but I want to use that example of what if this, what if... Somebody started something when they were 21 years old and they worked on that thing for the next 40 years straight and then they became a millionaire. Does that mean they know everything more than you or does that mean they started something and they kept that train going for a long, 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 long time? The number one lesson from being around millionaires that I have learned is you do not understand the importance of time. A lot of millionaires that I have met and worked with, we have clients and we've had clients in the past that are millionaires, they've been doing what they've been doing for years and years and years and years. And Alan and I have only been doing this for five. So a good way to think of this is, okay, it took Alan and I five years to get to a thousand episodes. So in theory, in another five years, so it was 365 days a year, 1,500... I don't know, that's probably like 2,000 episodes. What do you got? You want me to calculate how many years for another 1,000? 2.7 more years. 2.7 more years. Well, I was going to say in five years, how many can we do? So what's 365 times five? 1,825. Okay, so it took us five years to do our first 1,000. 
In the next five years, we're going to do 1,825. If you play that out into the future for 10, 15, 20 years, you start to see that if we are 7,500 episodes in, you might look at us at the beginning and say, there is no way I could ever do that. But we started with one just like everybody else, and then we kept running it. We just kept going and going and going and going. I was really thinking about this because I think a lot of us assume people who have something that we desire or people who have results that do not seem attainable to us are just a completely different species of human beings. And they know stuff that you don't probably. That's okay. It doesn't mean you can't learn that. But what you're not taking into effect and what's very difficult to take into effect is the value, importance, and... What is the third word I'm looking for? Momentum that time creates. The, the amount of time that somebody has been doing something can drastically affect the result that they have. We only see where somebody is, not where they started. And if you're out there, you probably only see where you are, not where your potential can bring you. And I think that's a blind spot for many, many people, including myself. That's why becoming quote unquote more successful and more successful and more successful and then getting to see people who are quote unquote more successful and more successful and more successful has actually built my belief because I've had millionaire clients who have completely missed calls and they said, oh, I didn't even know it wasn't on my calendar or that have Jeff things just like everybody else does. And it just really shows you that, look, yes, people are successful. Yes, there are people who are more successful than you. It does not necessarily mean they are more capable than you. It does not necessarily mean they're more dialed in than you. It does not necessarily mean that they have more potential than you. What it often means is they have been in the pool for longer than you swimming in whatever way that they swim. So they're doing their one thing for a long period of time and that has gotten the results for them that they have in their life does not mean you can't do it in your own way as long as you're willing to put in that amount of time. And I think what really broke it free for me, Alan, we were talking about this. I was talking to somebody recently who said, yeah, I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm at the point now where I'm doing 75 to $80,000 a month. And my initial reaction was, oh God, we're not there yet. We're not at seventy five or eighty thousand dollars a month. That's we suck. Like we're we must be so far behind. Are we ever gonna get there? And then I sat with it, and my next thought was ten years. This person's been doing this for ten years. They've been they've been studying this craft, they've been building the business, they've had clients, they've been working on themselves, they've been raising their awareness for ten years. Alan and I have been doing this for five. In five more years, there is no reason we cannot be making way more than that every month. But I didn't always have that belief. For the longest time, I didn't. So I want to make sure that you hear that if you're out there. But really think about this. And I said this, I said this quote, but I want to say it again. I guess it's a quote because I made it up. We only see where someone is, not where they started. And for most of us, we only see and feel where we are. We don't understand where we can be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Time is a... Very, very challenging thing to understand, but if you can get that part down and realize, okay, where I am is not where I am forever. If I do this for the next five years, 10 years, my results can look drastically different. Our 1,000th episode is a, a shining example of that. Kev, that right there is why The Compound Effect is my favorite book. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the compound effect, and I said this on the 1,000th episode, <clears throat> I reviewed it last night, after I was grocery shopping and I was listening to it, it was did really, you cry? really emotional. Did you cry when you listened to it? Again, yes. Yeah, I did yeah. too. Yeah. Well. yeah, it was really, it was, a lot of people have actually reached out saying that they cried with us as well on oh, that I episode. That. So if you haven't listened to episode 1000, it's definitely um, an emotional, powerful episode. But at the end, when you asked me, like, is there anything else you want to say? I, I essentially said, what you are capable of tomorrow is actually very small. What you're capable of tomorrow and a decade is actually huge. It's way beyond what you can even fathom. And The Art of Impossible is another book that I adore by Stephen Kotler. We've interviewed Steve. And there's a quote in that book that, that essentially says, 
there's very little that's impossible given a decade. You know, if you want to start a global podcast tomorrow, it's impossible. Unless you already have a huge brand and a huge business and a huge following, right? Mm. But but if you want to start a podcast tomorrow that eventually within a decade becomes global, totally doable. Yeah. See, you shouldn't believe in yourself based on tomorrow. You should believe in yourself based on what's possible long term. And I think I think that's really why I love that book so much is because if you haven't read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, the the book will help you understand what you're really capable of long term. I mean, Kev, we're, I'm 33, you're 32. I think about that all the time. I think about, okay, Steve Jobs at 33. You know, you and I actually one time broke this down and my hero at the time was Tony Robbins. Yours was, you were listening to a lot of Gary Vee back then. Yeah. And you and I talked about like, what if Tony Robbins and Gary Vee were to get together and try to have the biggest impact they possibly could? Build the biggest brand, biggest business, biggest community of personal development ever. And it's like, holy crap. And we asked ourselves, are we on track for that? Like, are we actually on track for that? And you asked me straight up, like, are you on track for Tony Robbins level impact? And I said, honestly, I have 27 more years, 28 at the time when we did this. And I said, yeah, I do believe that we are on track for that. And I know that for someone who maybe doesn't understand the the math of 1% improvements every day for 28 years, that might seem arrogant, but it's important to understand if I were to take the number of listens that Kevin and I have right now, I'm, I mean, just think about this. If you're a listener of this show, you're listening to me right now, and, and you've gotten value from this podcast, and we've helped you improve your life, you might tell a friend about this podcast. And if that friend tells a friend, and that friend tells a friend, and this is a weird thing, but I want people to understand, I did this recently with, with one of our team members because she was I was helping her with some math. I said, if one person has COVID and gives it to two people, and then those two people give it to two people, and then those two people, or those four people give it to two people, and those those eight people give it to two people. The numbers get wild, and I showed her, I actually had like a drawing written out on my Remarkable. You know, it's it's one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64, 64 to 128. The the compound effect of, of these these things over time gets wild. People don't, it's like the snowball effect. So when you roll a a small little snowball down a hill, it gets exponentially larger over time. And that's why Warren Buffett says, the key in life is to find your snowball and to roll it down a really long hill. And essentially what this episode is, the number one lesson from being around millionaires is that they found their snowball and they rolled it down a really long hill. And remember, their hill is just longer than yours. Mm. And maybe they didn't lose sight of their one thing. Maybe So so I'll just do this. Um, Kev, I want you to imagine yourself 10 years from now. And and 10 years from now, you will have been podcasting for 15 years. I want you to picture that version of of Kevin, okay? Mm. Now, picture that version of Kevin. Picture the home he lives in. Picture the car he drives. Picture the the type of man he is, picture picture how in shape you'll be, picture your intimate relationship, picture whatever your life looks like then, okay? That version of Kevin will be far more sought after and everyone will assume that version of Kevin knows more than this version of Kevin does. And, and in this case, you will, right? Obviously, you're going to learn a lot in the next 10 years. But now I want you to take podcasting out of it. Imagine that Kevin never podcasted. There goes your snowball. Mm. See, Kevin's, in the next two weeks, you're going to be on like what, like 40 podcasts or something like that? Some, yeah, between ours and other shows, probably, yeah, close, close to 40. Okay, so now in 10 years from now, with an average of, you know, let's say 15 or 20 podcasts a week, every week for 10 years, you know, you're obviously going to be very, very, very successful in this industry. But if you take podcasting out of the equation, you are not even close to that. All, you're, you're no longer living in that mansion. You no longer have that amazing car. You no longer, NLU is not a thing. So I think that what I want all our listeners to understand is that these people, these millionaires, and I've been belly to belly with millionaires, both virtually and in person. I remember I tracked it. It was, it was over 300 
hours, over 300 hours, literally belly, belly to belly, virtually or in person with millionaires. Because I used to track millionaire mentor meetings. Mm-hmm. Now I just call them masterminds. Um, and there's a whole story behind that. But what I started to understand was, oh, okay, these people do not know more than I do about everything. They know more than I do about their thing. They do not know more than I do about everything. They know way more than I do about their thing. So here's what I do. Hi, my name is Tim Melanson, and I have a web development agency called Creative Crew Agency, and I'm also a podcast host for the Work at Home Rockstar podcast. I met Alan a little over a year ago through my podcast. He was a guest on my podcast, and we had an epic conversation, and I was just really impressed with his work ethic. So I uh, decided to take him up on his 30 minute consultation and I really liked what he had to say. He was very reliant on systems, which I was in the market for a coach at the time and I was looking for something that would allow me to synergize my businesses, but make me feel like I'm actually more productive as well. And uh, I was impressed by his podcast as well. I was impressed by Kevin. And so I decided to jump on board with him and it's been a little over a year now. My business has grown, but more importantly, I feel much less stressed and much more purposeful with uh, what I'm doing in the direction that I'm going. So I definitely highly recommend Alan. If you're looking for some accountability, if you're looking for some tools, then look him up, take him up on this consultation. Thank you so much. Bye. I always figure out what is it that they understand that I don't yet. And I try to figure out what their snowball is. Um, you know, I'm thinking of one millionaire right now. His snowball is industrial automation and and sales and negotiation. That's like it. That's like his. And then you've got like another one I'm thinking of. It's it's show business, it's talent acquisition, and it's pitching and presenting really effectively. Great communication. And then I'm thinking of another mentor um, right now. It's it's numbers, it's mathematics, it's engineering, it's technology, and it's really just financial spreadsheets. And so all of them are multimillionaires. And then one more I'm thinking of is just finance. And it's honestly sales. The dude just loves people, talks to people all the time, like very much sales. So all four of those mentors that I just went through, they're really, really, really good at like a couple things. They're actually fairly bad at most other things. And that's been really hard for me because I love these people a lot. But when I started to realize how bad they were in these other areas of their life, it was hard for me to stay close to them because I don't want that bad to rub off on me for lack of better phrasing. And so the number one lesson from being around millionaires that Kevin and I really, we can give to you. Now, obviously you're going to have to go out and experience this for yourself, but we can give you the lesson. The lesson is, is that they know so much more than you do about their thing, but they do not know more than you do about everything, not even close. And they definitely 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 don't have it all figured out i mean one of my mentors had 150 million dollar net worth several in the tens and 20s and then one was you know almost 500 million and i'm telling you right now they do not know everything they really 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 don't but they are really really good at a couple things that they just stayed in that lane for decades and and most of them quite frankly are older yeah. And just from a wealth perspective, I just want people to know this. When it comes to results, Kevin and I had ha- have had more results in the last year than the previous four combined. And so you got to understand, if I could take the world's wealth and and show you the age demographic of the people that have most of the wealth, I mean, it's, it's, it's a drastic... This is why young people struggle with self-worth so much. When you're young and you're making... I made $7.25 an hour. When you're young... You feel so bad about yourself, but but the reason why is because you're just not worth that much anymore, or yet, yet. You're when you're a teenager, you don't know very much. You haven't found your thing yet. You 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 don't know business and economy and country and philosophy and all these things. You don't know much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I we, and I think that I thought we lost you there. Honestly, yeah, I almost, was... <laughs> almost. I I just want everyone out there to to really realize that time is the one thing you'll never get back. But if you invest today for a brighter tomorrow to make sure you're more valuable, your life will continue to improve beyond your wildest dreams. And it's really it's really important that you don't think all these other people have something you don't. Because remember, at one point, they all 
were in their 20s just lost and trying to figure it out too you know and and i think that's important one question for you kev i know you gotta go Mm. i wanted to ask you this though kevin you know has has seen some of the behind the scenes conversations that i've had with many of these millionaires and were you expecting something different than what you experienced for sure in terms of can you just articulate for us what that was like to and i just want to be um candid here prior to kevin i had spent a lot of time with millionaires that was that was a focus for me just you know if you want to be very successful you got to get around successful people and study what they do and study what they don't do and and so I was, I was very much focused on trying to be around as many wealthy people and learn from them as much as I possibly could. And so I had done a lot of that prior to Kevin and I teaming up. And I remember the very first interview we ever did with a millionaire and how mm. fascinating it was mm. to observe you. Mm. Um, can you take the listeners through what that was like? For those, for maybe, maybe they've never been around a lot of millionaires. We literally coach some millionaires. So I think it's less... I think it's good to give people some perspective here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because I think it seems like such a, and it is rare for most people, I think. You don't necessarily run into a millionaire or, or are friends with one. But I think I remember in my mind, it was this person must be such a shining example of everything is together all of the time to get to the point where they are in their life. That was what I was thinking is like, I they definitely know everything way more than I do. They're definitely way more disciplined. They're definitely smarter. They're probably a great speaker. They're probably very wise. Just everything better than me. That was always my thought. This person must be better than me at everything. At everything. And What did you find out? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say and they must be wiser. Like they must know, not just intellectually everything, but they must like know just everything. The lessons that they have must be so wise. I remember that we we lived with one of our millionaire mentors for a short time, and Alan and I outworked him. I mean, it wasn't close. <laughs> it wasn't even, and I was so surprised. I was like, wait, what? I don't get it. It's like noon and you're going out. Like, what do you mean? I thought we were going to work. <laughs> so that was that was the first time I had ever spent time around somebody, at least that I knew was a millionaire. And it was just very much like, oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't real like, you're just kind of hanging out. Okay, interesting. Okay, so you very much to what we're saying, you very much found one thing. You spent a lot of time mastering that one thing. You built momentum and you did it for 10, 15, 20 years. And, and again, there's nothing against that. I, I know Alan and I are kind of making a joke about it, but... The reason we did this episode is because I think if you lack belief, you're going to assume this is impossible for you. You're going to assume that this is not something you can accomplish when really, all things considered, it's not nearly as hard as you think it is. And I know that might sound crazy. I understand that. It would have sounded crazy to me. I would have said, sir, you do not know what you're talking about. But I mean, it's... I don't want to say it's a letdown because it's not. We have some clients that are millionaires that are amazing. So I don't I don't mean it in any negative thing, but I do know for me it really opened up the possibilities. It opened up the possibilities of what are what can happen over time. When I used to I used to drive a truck and we used to deliver building materials. And there was Liberty Mutual, the insurance company. They were building, I don't think it's their headquarters, but they were building a skyscraper in Boston from the ground up. When you deliver to a building like that, say you're delivering there once a week, you don't really see that much of a difference. You don't really see that much of a difference. You can't see another floor. You see like maybe a couple new windows or something up on the outside or whatever. Month after month, things start to look a little bit different. But like a project like that can take years. I mean, it can take three, four, five, six years to build a skyscraper. And that's that's a skyscraper. And that's, again, it's not super long in the grand scheme of things, but you don't see on the day to day. Like when you, del- if you deliver there every day, nothing changes. It's the same building it was yesterday. But if you stack those days into weeks, into months, into years, and then the thing's finally built, it's like, oh wow, I remember when this was just at the ground level and people worked on it every single day for the last five years and it became a skyscraper. And I just think it's an important lesson for all of us, especially if you're somebody who did not grow up around money or you assume that 
And full disclosure, there is a chance that maybe you don't know as much as you think you do. We always say that. That's definitely a possibility. But mm -hmm. don't just automatically assume that just because somebody has better results than you, it means they know everything better than you do. They probably know their thing better than you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. Because you probably know your thing better than them. And you definitely... Most right? likely. Yeah. And if you go all in on that thing, odds are, I won't say odds are, there's a, a good chance if you do the right things strategically for long enough, you can be in the position that they're in. That's I know we got to go. My very last point. I'm certain that if you're listening or watching this, there's something that you know more about than Kevin and I. There's something that you are better than us at. 100%. There's no question. That's a fact. You can't be a master of everything in this world. There's too many things. There's so many sports, there's so many activities, there's so many. And so I think the really important piece here is what is your passion and what is your purpose and have you gone all in on it and are you focusing on what's possible for you in the long term? Just like what I did with Kevin's future pacing there of like takeaway podcasting, now he's not the Kevin you know. Okay, Taylor Swift, takeaway guitar and country singing, now she's not the Taylor Swift you know. Serena Williams, takeaway tennis, now she's not the Serena Williams you know. You know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, take away WWE and acting, and now he's no longer the person you know. Leonardo DiCaprio, take away acting, right? So every Oprah Winfrey, take away media. You, every one of us, it, it's just, every one of us is better than Oprah at something. Every one of us. You know, it's so important to know that. It's really, really important to know that because otherwise you'll spend your whole life not understanding your real value. Not from an ego place, not from a delusional place, but from a real, like, this is actually doable for me thing. It's really important, you know? It's really, really important. So don't underestimate what 10, 20, 30 years can do. And um, when you meet these people, you realize, like, oh, wow, that's just what you've been doing for that long, and that's awesome, and and um, I can do it too. Next Level Nation, I remember one time I bought a... It wasn't, I didn't buy it. It was free. I bought a free course. So I signed up for a free course for podcasting. And I remember it was the worst thing I have ever <laughs> quote unquote purchased. It just, you could tell that the person said, okay, what can we put together that has like just a little bit of value that we can get people to buy? So we'll be able to email them. And I remember after I finished that, I was like, this is useless. Like, we're never going to do something like this. I don't ever want to create something that doesn't have any value. It's only to serve us. So Alan and I sat down on a Sunday, and we recorded in an hour and a half course in the studio on video, and we wanted to charge for it. And Alan said, Kev, I think we should give this away for free. And I was like, ah, that's terrible. I don't want to do that. But you know what? Let's do it. Value first. So we have a course on the website. It's totally free, and it was designed to be a paid course. It was designed for us to charge for it, and then we decided not to. So if you're in the place maybe where either group coaching or one-on-one -on -one or the retreat or live events or whatever it may be, you're not there financially, this course is completely free. It is super, super, super valuable, and you can download it. You can take it at your own pace. There's worksheets. Share it with a friend. It is a great way to get to the next level of your life on a very tight budget, and that is what we want to provide for each and every one of you out there. Next level nation maybe you feel stuck maybe you feel lost maybe you're feeling hopeless hopeless is a a word that i think a lot of people have been feeling um especially since covid and all of that but i do think things are looking up that said if you want to succeed at a higher level but you really feel like you're not making progress and you don't really know how kevin and i can help you we created group coaching to put you on a team of 10 individuals. So nine other individuals that are like-minded. They're all listeners of this show. We don't really go outside the community and recruit people for these things. So it's all people who obviously know of Next Level You and want to get to the next level of their life. So that common core value, that common core aspiration is, is there. It's, it's a part of the culture. You will fit in perfectly. That's why I can say that with confidence because we are very actually strategic about who we allow into these groups. Um, we want to make sure that we can set peak performance partners up properly and that it's all going to work and that everyone, no one's in the group that is going to be disrespectful or not vulnerable or not honest. And so it's really good. We know you're going to fit in. If you're a listener to this show, there's a reason why all the NLU team members are all from the community because it's, it's really a beautiful through line for all of us. And so it's more affordable than you think. Click the link in the show notes, check out the landing page. All the information is there. Group seven will be the first one with a full workbook. 
And uh, it's really become quite the polished product at this point. You're going to get the app. You're going to track habits. Um, we're going to start small and build. And I promise you this, you will achieve more in 90 days than you ever have. And you're going to build massive momentum to go out and build your own skyscraper. So it starts July 12th. Um, half the spot, spots, wow, half the, <laughs> sparts, half the spots are already accounted for. Um, we had a lot of people that actually didn't get into group six that want group seven. So reach out as soon as possible. Click the landing page, uh, link in the landing page and uh, join us for group seven. Seven times. Seven groups. It's wild. Seven groups. I remember that. I was remember just, when it was one group. Just a dream. Yeah. Just crazy, man. It crazy. is crazy. Next level nation tomorrow. It's going to, you know, what's even crazier. It's going to be weird for me to say this for the next however many episodes for episode number 1004. You're supposed to say 1,000 and, or you're supposed to say 1,004? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I'm going to do some research. <laughs> it is last week's live Q&A. How do you actually know who's capable of supporting you? So there's a lot of people out there who want to see you succeed, but they don't necessarily have the awareness or the consistency or the wisdom to help you do that. So we talked about how to figure out who can actually help you get there. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. Cheers again to 1,000 episodes in the best community in the world at nlu we do not have fans we have family we will talk to you all tomorrow please reach out